to earn at least as much money if no. you, as you, if no, not more? No, he doesn't. How old are you? Me, I'm 20. Okay, yeah, she's no life experience. Okay. <laughs> That's actually his <laughs> He's just like, oh my gosh, this 20 year old is destroying me in a debate. <laughs> Hey yo, what's good? Welcome back to the channel. Kevin Ray Wilder as always here. How you doing? Today what we're talking about is um, <laughs> Fresh and Fit, the Fresh and Fit podcast. Everybody's favorite podcast. There's so many memeable moments here and there's a lot of things to learn from this podcast uh, to give them credit. Usually it's at uh, Myron and Fresh Prince CEO's expense, but there's still uh, good opportunities to learn nonetheless. Today, we are literally going to watch Myron Gaines especially get destroyed by a 20-year-old 20, a 20 girl with facts and logic, Ben Shapiro style. Um, it's quite hilarious, I think. <laughs> I should just play it and we'll go from there, okay? But, I mean, he gets utterly obliterated, like objectively. It's pretty funny. So, anyway, let's react to it. Uh, here we go. All right, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we move on, spank the like button. She's been a naughty, naughty girl. And show her who's daddy by subscribing to the channel. All righty, here we go. Let's start the video. No, I'm about to say something here controversial, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Because a lot of guys, some of you guys might be married, some of you guys might be in a relationship with a woman. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to stand firm on it. I don't care what anyone says. If a woman does not give you the bedroom fun, okay, I'm trying to keep you YouTube friendly, she's useless to you. And I'm going to say why, okay? I know that sounds awful to say it like that, to objectify in that way. But the thing is this, men don't ask for much from women, right? We want some, some booty, maybe a sandwich here or there, peace and quiet. Men don't want much. Women, however... Taller than me, make more money than me, successful, confidence, all this stuff, right? Big dick, all this other stuff. So women require a lot from men. So men don't ask for much. But since we don't ask for much, the things that we ask for are much more important. So if a girl doesn't give you sex, bro, that's like one third of what she's supposed to give you gone. 50% almost. So my thing is this. If you're, if you're in a relationship right now, for all the guys that are watching out there, you're in a relationship with a girl, your wife, whatever it is, and she's no longer giving you enthusiastic sex, ooh, start to prepare to kick her to the curb, okay? Because... What will happen is if a woman doesn't respect you, this is what she's going to do. She's going to dangle that pussy against you. Oh, you want some of this? Oh, okay. Take out the trash. Cook for me. Oh, take me to Nobu. Take me to Komodo. And that right there, when a woman starts leveraging bedroom fun against you, that's when she no longer respects you guys. And right now you're seeing the byproduct of a woman that no longer respects her husband. You know what I'm saying? Talking to him like this in the way. Okay, so I think at the end there, he was referencing some other video that they just watched. Here's the interesting part about Fresh and Fit is they always kind of uh, hide, they have nuggets of truth here and there. And because they have nuggets of truth, they can kind of uh, kind of throw in a bunch of BS and then you just assume everything's, you know, true, I guess, uh, from the standpoint of guys who really don't know anything about this stuff. So it's the job of someone like me to critique and point this out. All right, because the things that he said there aren't unreasonable. Yeah, if your girl stops having sex with you, that's a huge red flag. There's something going on there. Uh, it's more so the solutions that he provides to that being the case that is, well, interesting. And that 21, that 20 year old girl is going to uh, take him to town for in a second here. So let's fast forward to that point. I uh, know all the time. It's just better. So you guys don't think your girl happen. can say no? Yeah, like, can you come happen. home and you want to, and she don't want to, and she says no, it's a problem. The, you're gonna kick it to the curb. Yeah, the woman is not like <laughs> yes. yes. What the hell? No. Here's what question. I mean, yes. if, if I come home from work and uh -huh. I am tired, I want to tell my girl I want to have sex, and she's like, oh no, nah, I'm tired. Then at that point, remember we agreed to a long relationship. So my deal is the bargain. I'm paying the bills. I'm taking care of the whole household. If all I want is some pleasure when I get home from work, but why is I, that bad? I don't understand the link between paying the bills and having sex with yeah, your. Like, what's the girl. connection? Because remember, right? It takes two roles in a relationship. One person does A, one person does B. If I'm the guy and I'm a real man, I'm taking, taking care of the household, I'm paying the bills, and I'm adding to the family. Whoa, hold on a second here. If I'm a real man, I'm, I'm paying the bills, doing all these things, so you're beta providing. That's what it sounds like. These guys are always talking about alpha males versus beta males. They always plug the rational male. So that is beta, be uh, beta providing behavior, isn't it? Very interesting. You know, it's, it's, it, here's a cool thing about podcasts is that the truth kind of reveals itself over time uh, after you, because you have so many hours of you talking, right? So these guys can act all macho thinking that they're like these, you know, the stereotypical alpha male. And yet 
They say something like that, where the truth is revealed. He truly thinks that to be a real man, you're providing for the girl. You are a beta provider. Rollo says this in his Rational Male book, which they look at as the Bible of, of dating dynamics, that girls want an alpha male and then they want a beta to provide for them. That's exactly what he was just talking about there. Come on. <laughs> now when I get home from, from that whole stressful day, or let's say a whole week of stress, right? My girl's home as well. Why can't we have sex? Because I get it. You might be tired from Malin. I 100% get that. But every, okay, I'll say this. Every now and then, I understand that. But for the most part, if I'm paying the bills, I expect on some level, you know what? If you're my girl and you don't want me to step out, then take care of me while I'm here. Yeah, but if you have like the financial power, it doesn't mean that you can decide everything in a relationship. I think like, you should uh, put your woman in the mood. If you want to have sex three times a day, yeah, exactly. like, I want to come in and talk to me. It doesn't mean you have to go down on me, but like, come kiss my yeah, exactly. neck. Like, yeah. Yeah. Be affectionate. No, no, no. And yeah. I, I will say, 100%, you can't just rush in if it's dry. That, 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 that's yeah, like, that's hard. That's for you guys. But, I'm saying, Mm. I think a lot of guys. I'll do, I'll do that shit, but I'm not gonna. You know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna to be, I'm just gonna have to okay, say the truth about this because I, I love this. Because earlier in the show, we asked you, ladies, would you be content with a man stepping out and having sex with other women? All of you were pretty much like, no, you will not accept that. However, you will not pleasure him when it doesn't convenience you. Hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. What? Because you guys are saying, if I'm tired and I'm not ready or whatever, I should be able to say no. And but, my answer to that, but, let me finish. Mm -hmm. My answer to that is this. I get it. You know, you might have had a long day walking in your heels. You might have had a long day working. You might have had a long day doing something, whatever it may be. But the point is this, okay? That's like me saying, oh, you, you had a long day working with your heels? Well, you know what? I, you know, I, I didn't pay the bills this week. You know, I was, I was so focused on making sandwiches. Damn it, man. I was so focused on the light just came off. Oh my God, I was so focused. Here's the problem, ladies. You guys want to be able to get the benefits of male provisioning and security and protection without giving up what you're supposed to be giving to the man. Because the reality is this, if someone breaks into the house, right? And I'm your husband, I'm supposed to protect and care for you. I can't just say, damn, man, I'm not really feeling it right now. Like, you know, I'm kind of scared. I don't know how I feel about this. Like this guy might kill me. You know what? I'm not in the mood. You know what? I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling brave today. You got, you got this one, right? You can, you can watch the porn. <laughs> There's a lot to cover there, but I'll keep it brief because I want to get to the part where the girl basically destroys uh, him. And I don't really have to do that much debunking because she basically does it for me. Um, so here's one thing with uh, Myron and these guys, which I find very interesting, is they try to treat relationships as if they are transactional, right? And in some respects, it always is going to be transactional. Some of it's kind of unspoken, right? Somebody usually takes on the provider role of you know, paying the bills, especially once you have children. Uh, the other person does the child re rearing. You know, typically, the woman's doing the child rearing. The man's you know, out there earning the bucks. In the year 2021, I guess those roles can be reversed sometimes, whatever, right? Um, but that being the case, you know, these guys always just talk about these things as if they're transactional. And it goes completely against their red pill ideology of basically saying, well, a woman's going to break rules for an alpha, right? So why do, if she's going to break rules for an alpha, according to their ideology, according to the rational male, which is their, you know, Bible of dating, um, why are they acting differently? Maybe it's perhaps because they are more in alignment with the archetype of the beta male rather than the alpha male. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, anyway, let's fast forward to the good part where the 20 year old girl destroys Myron Gaines with facts and logic. It's really funny. Okay, here we go. He doesn't have to though. Like, like I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go a step further. Your pleasure is irrelevant. I'm gonna say it. I am gonna say it. Your pleasure is irrelevant because, because here's the thing. <laughs> your I'm gonna say it. Most oh, men ain't gonna admit it. I'm gonna say it. Your pleasure is irrelevant because a woman's, uh, uh, what? Women benefit from the security, provisioning, and all the other things that a man brings to the table. The fact that you don't have to work, that you live a very comfortable life, you're able to get what you want, live a... But you're, you, you're, you're, you're telling about that. You're no, telling no, about no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah. Because let's keep it a stack. We, we're going to have this conversation. Let's do it. Women never treat sex as what it is. What is sex? It's basically a handshake, right? Equal value exchange. Women never treat it like that. What women do is they treat sex as a value-loaded exchange. And what I mean by that is they're always going to expect something in return for the sex, right? Let's keep, let's keep it real. Like a girl ain't just gonna fuck you just because. And typically she's gonna want you to take her on a date, maybe shop, whatever it is. Women, to some degree, leverage sex for some kind of compliance for men. Very rarely you're gonna see a guy, you're hot, I'm hot, let's do it right now, I don't even know your name. Very rarely that's gonna happen, they're gonna leverage it. So. 
again, he's just showing his true colors, man. If you fit the archetype of the alpha male, which clearly, according to Myron Gaines himself, I'm not making a judgment here, but the, based on his personal experience, he hasn't. Um, yeah, that's going to happen sometimes where girls just want to bang you because they're horny and they think that you're hot, right? Clearly, they just not many girls have thought that, that way against uh, about Myron. And in Myron's case, girls have always leveraged sex against him to get something else from him. Maybe because he's not fitting the alpha archetype that he tries to espouse and, and in, in his content to basically say, okay, well, this is the ideal to strive for, right? But he hasn't actually lived that life himself. This isn't a guy talking right now who's actually lived that type of lifestyle. Um, so it's very, it's, it's very interesting. Okay, I keep saying that the girl is going to destroy him with facts and logic, and I keep talking. I apologize. I'll let her do the talking. It's happening in a second here. With that said, since you treat sex as a value-loaded exchange, right, where you're getting something in return typically, the man really doesn't have to worry about it because he's providing all these other things for you. Your pleasure is irrelevant with sex because he has to bring all these other things to the table. And this is the uncomfortable reality. Your duty as a wife is to keep your man happy sexually because men don't ask for much. You guys ask for much. And by virtue of a man being in a relationship with you, I know inevitably he has to bring value to the relationship. You guys don't have to bring much to the relationship. But do you think that's all there is to a relationship? Just sex and you paying the bills? Like, because it's not. And you guys are really making it seem like you're buying sex. Oh, I pay the bills, so you have to fuck me. Like, no, I don't actually. Like, no, you don't. You don't. And that's what I'm saying. Then you have to be content. Yep. <laughs> he, she basically just called him out for being a beta provider. I'm sharing him. No, I don't either. Yeah, like, okay, you can see, just go. That, that, like, that, 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 like, first, first, of all, first of all, I don't have a problem with sharing my man. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay. But, but if we spoke about this is us relationship and this is a me and you relationship, then it's going to be that way. Because yeah. that's, at, the, at the end of the day, a relationship is whatever you make it. A relationship doesn't have to go by the same guidelines that her relationship goes by and that her relationship goes by. If I meet you and we both agree, okay, this is what we're going to do and this is how it's going to be. And then you're going to start cheating. Then that's completely freaking different. Boom. Totally. I talked about this with uh, Donovan Sharp's uh, autistic video talking about how uh, women, uh, women cheat, men simply have sex. It's like, dude, yes, of course, men and women cheat for different reasons. And typically when the woman cheats, it's way worse because it's usually an emotional thing and not purely just the in the moment, like, oh, my hormones are going crazy type of thing. Um, if they're in a committed relationship, of course. Uh, but the, the problem with cheating as a man is if you make a promise and you break your promise. As a man, I think one thing that we can all agree on, us men watching, and us, I'm talking to you here because it's like 99% dudes that watch this channel, understandably so. Um, one thing that we can all agree on is you're only as good as your word, right? And if you're only as good as your word and you make a promise to anybody, man, woman, kid, and you break it, you're untrustworthy. That's the number one thing that you could ever, the number one compliment you could ever give somebody is that you trust them. And it's the number one thing, compliment that you could ever receive is that you're a trustworthy person. You're only as good as your word. So if you say that you're not gonna cheat or you have ground rules or whatever for the relationship, you agree to be only exclusive to one another, you break it, you're a piece of shit, all right? Doesn't matter if you're a man, woman, trans, whatever, that's, that's doing the cheating. If you make a promise, you break it, you're a piece of shit. And she kind of nailed him on the cross there. Um, and the slaughter will continue. This, this video is great, so let's continue. But the way that, like, okay, because now you guys are saying like, oh yeah, but how you guys first brought it up, you guys are making it seem like you're coming home to your wife, you're looking at her and you're like, I'm tired from work, let's fuck. Nobody's gonna wanna do that. Like, and that's the way you guys made it seem. You guys didn't make it seem like you guys are coming home. You're like, hey baby, start kissing on your girl, and it gets and it goes from there. No, you guys are making it seem like you guys are walking into your house like hey, wife, and you're like, I had a long day at work, shit. I pay all the bills, you did nothing today, so now you have to. Like, okay, well, I'll tell you this. Hold on, no, 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 no. And you know, if we're gonna have these negotiable roles like this. <laughs> yeah, she, again, she just called about for being a beta provider. Um, yeah, if your girl doesn't want to have sex with you, that's probably not a good thing. Um, but the only reason, again, because you go into the relationship, I'm speaking from Myron's standpoint, if you go into the relationship thinking it's a transactional thing because you're secretly a beta male, um, then she's going to, you know, treat you with disrespect. She, by virtue of setting rules and guidelines, by f making things all logical, making the relationship logical, um, which is what men tend to do and it gets them to, into a lot of trouble, 
um, she's going to lose respect for you and she's not going to want to have sex with you as much because she's not going to be as attracted to you because that's a very beta thing to do. It'd be like, oh, here's how we make this relationship transactional. I go make the money and then you have sex with me. You're breaking the deal. What the heck? Why don't you want to have sex with me? Maybe because you're the type of person that actually tries to make it a transactional thing in the first place. That's probably why she's turned off. Where he's got a uh, butter you up and all that other stuff. If someone breaks into the house, all right, you can run your shit. Then you know what? I'm gonna look at you and be like, hey, um, <laughs> can you get, sing to me real quick? Get me ready. I'm, I'm gonna like, I, I need to go defend us. Can, can you, um, can you give me like, uh, play, play the Vegeta theme for me? Like, come on, I need to get hyped up. Can you do that? But you're you're like, Yo, what the fuck? Are, are you crazy? We, we're gonna get robbed right now. But you're comparing something that has to be like life threatening and like my safety and all of our safety because you're in the house too. We could both get shot if you're not gonna do nothing. You're comparing that to like something that isn't. A danger, something that isn't like you don't need to have sex, like you want to have sex, you don't need to have sex. You know what's perfect? You just walked right into my trap. Okay, <laughs> exactly. Hard. He's putting himself on the line for something far more serious and more dangerous, and you can't even give him sex. But there's That's no comparison the there. There's a big comparison. Yeah. He's putting his life on the line because someone broke into our home where we yeah. both live, yes. where we all live, but, but, where on, our kids on. are let at. Me, let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's just classic projection, man. It's like, you walked into my trap. Meanwhile, he walked into her trap. <laughs> or there, well, he just set a trap for himself. Uh, yeah, she's exactly right. It's like when you're, so first of all, it's a false premise uh, to say, okay, well, as a man, it's my role to protect the home when somebody breaks into the house. Okay, it depends on if you guys have that arrangement or not. Typically, the guy's gonna take that role. But also, let's be honest, guys, we live in 2021. This isn't the 1500s, okay? We have firearms, especially these, these folks, and they're in Florida, you're allowed to have a gun. You have a gun, you take your gun off the rack, and then you go to the front door if you, if you think someone's about to break in, and then you, you, you do the, uh, the, the little, uh, what is it? Uh, you cock the shotgun, and then typically when they hear that sound, then they're going to go running away. That's the type of stuff that the, uh, the NRA teaches women, especially, right? They actually, uh, if you're a woman, the best thing to do is to learn how to have a shotgun because you don't have to have that good of aim. And you can give them a warning sign without shooting them of being like, hey, I'm armed. And if you break in, you're fucked. You know, so a woman could totally take on that role nowadays. Um, and also, yeah, like she said, it's like, okay, you're not just defending your woman, you're defending yourself, you're defending your own home, you're potentially defending your children. Stop trying to act like it's some heroic sacrifice that you're doing. Sometimes it is, don't get me wrong, but a better comparison that Myron could have made there is if he's saying, okay, well, if somebody breaks in and I'm risking my life and I will, I'm willing to give my life for you, and that is my role as a man, um, I don't necessarily 100% agree with that because I think it depends. If he took it from that standpoint, he'd have more of an argument. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's, she's just roasting the hell out of him here. This is pretty funny, <laughs> especially because he posted this as a separate clip thinking that like he destroyed the girl or something. And, you know, the comment section, because these guys are all zealots and big fans of Fresh and Fit and don't uh, question um, w the things that they have to say just because they're zealots. You know, you have all these autists in the comments being like, yeah, you got her, you got her. It's like, come on, man. Like the best way to gauge whether somebody won an argument or not, when you have two people who are opposing, who have opposing views, is to look at what an outside observer who isn't biased one way or the other, how they would think, who came out of the debate on top. And with this, it's pretty obvious that it's the girl. And if it's not obvious already, it will become more and more obvious as this clip goes on. He's putting his life on the line to protect you. And putting himself. himself. No, 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 no. He can run out the house. Okay, I can run out that. We can all run. We can all run. We can all run. Let's keep it stacked, though. Let's keep it stacked. You ain't gonna expect him to run. He's gonna have to defend the house. Most guys, if, it, if he loves his wife, he's gonna defend her. So he's putting his life on the line to protect you. But you're over here saying, well, if I don't feel it right now, you don't kiss me on my neck, I'm I not think, gonna give it to you. I think that protect a person doesn't mean to pay the bills or no, 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 ladies, insure the is insure it. You guys have a problem with doing your job. But you don't. But you have you have a problem with doing your job. But you don't have a problem with holding your husband to his job. See the difference? Mm, he yeah. has to put his life on the line to protect you. He's obligated to do that. But if he says, "Hey, I want you to have sex with me," and you, hey, I don't feel like kissing you on the neck. I just want to get my knees up. This is a problem. I'm not an object. But he's expected to put his life on the line for you. That's ridiculous. But how is he putting his life on the yeah. line for me if they're breaking into a home where we both live at? <laughs> yeah. Like you're defending yourself as well. You're not only oh. defending me. I'll hide under the bed. Like yes. go defend yourself. Run out. Do whatever you gotta and, do. But like, and that's the point is that you can't do it. Why not? 
You, you as a man, woman, well, as, as a, a man, as a man yourself, if I said, "Oh, babe, I got it," most men will be like, "No, you don't. I got it. I'm gonna protect you because that's what that's just normal." But again, you're comparing somebody breaking into our home to me having to have sex with you when you come home from work. But what? Wait, 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 wait. That's great. I don't know if this girl has uh, any training in, um, any training in like rhetoric or debate, uh, like I do. Uh, but she. She's great because she basically just pointed out a false equivalency, uh, a logical fallacy there, which is uh, really good. Um, it's pretty cool when you see people who are, I guess, more lay persons um, being able to destroy arguments by pointing out fallacious arguments like, um, like Myron's making here. So I'm very impressed. This is cool. Just hearing you, but you're not listening. Hold what on, I'm but, saying is that but. his investment is far stronger mm -hmm. and more involved than your investment. He's got to put his life on the line, whereas he's asking you for sex and temporary discomfort or you not wanting to do it at the time because I'm not feeling hot enough, is you're making us think like, I shouldn't have to be able to do this. And what I'm saying is that he's protecting you, putting you, uh, his life on the line for you, so he's obviously more but, uh, involved. You are not mentioning what uh, a wife do for the, is her husband. So you are like saying, okay, man, do man, do man, do like, uh, and not in every household, girls do pay bills. Yeah, I was gonna ask a you what your bills. opinion was. What if the man's not bringing paying the bills? What if he's not bringing that financial exactly. value? What if he doesn't they, have a higher status? Has the eighty percent of men? You know, See, but, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. But what he's saying is, for example, if you stop the home invasion on your own, right, and he and he cowers and he runs away, the next day you will break up with him, right? And that's what he's trying to say. If we robbed, if someone robbed the house and I left you there to deal with it. You would break up with me the next day. You would divorce me. You'd be like, what the fuck? What I'm saying is that men should feel the same way when a girl doesn't want to give them sex. Now, I get what you're saying. What about for guys? I'm paying half the bills, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, that's an average guy. But most guys, like, they have their shit together, whatever. They're going to cover everything. And it's what I'm saying is most that... Most guys don't have their shit together. Right? Yeah, well, we're talking, we're talking we're about guys talk, that have their shit together. Talk, this man is a celebrity paying all the bills for his wife and supporting her. Yeah. And she ain't doing it. That's the problem. We're not talking about average guys that do 50-50. Listen, you want to do that 50-50 stuff? Then yeah, cool. That's negotiable. But most guys, like guys that have their shit together financially and are like a little bit more dominant, they're not pussies. Yeah. They're not going to tolerate that BS. And the thing, thing, thing. <laughs> most guys who have their shit together and aren't pussies are going to be beta providers. Come on, bro. Cognitive dissonance. You, you, you guys should name this the Cognitive Dissonance Podcast. I like to call them the fake and fat podcast. Because, you know, they're pretty much faking and LARPing their way to the top uh, by trying to act like these alpha males. And then also, you know, Myron's a fit guy, but Fresh Prince CEO really isn't. And I'm not one to do name calling and call them fat or whatnot. But I've seen a few streams where Fresh's belly is kind of resting on the table. And I can't, I couldn't help but think, oh my gosh, these guys are probably more accurately called fake and fat. Okay. If you want to call them fake and fat, I kind of do. I think it's funny. Anyway, let's continue. Me too. Is that, like I said, if you're, if you're not willing to give him the sex whenever he wants, that's cool. But understand that he's going to get it from somewhere else. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you have to be cool with that because you don't want to do your job. And that's what it is. And ladies get mad when I say that. But men are success objects and women tend to be looked at as sex objects. I know that's fucked up. But there's a reason why you guys can make $500 you know, a day from selling feet pictures on OnlyFans. And we can't. Yeah, the issue here is leverage. And most guys, like you said, they're bums. 80% they have to go to work and they don't really cover all the bills. So matter of fact is you would never, you know, handle that, that situation the same way. However, we're talking about the top 10% of guys that are actually successful. They're doing anything like the guy in the video. So Myron's saying, just, just to break it down even further, that if I'm going to put my life on the line, if I'm going to provide for the family, right, that's my obligation. Now, your obligation is obviously household chores, you know, taking care of the house, making sure the family's good, and then for stepping out. But once again, you leverage that whole period of time against him, and then you wonder why he cheats. That's, that's all I'm no, saying. No, yeah. what if you are giving him everything he asked for and he still cheats? So what's, what's the explanation there? We well, told you already, yeah. men don't cheat, they just all have right. sex. Yeah, that's cheating. All right, so that's sex is cheating. You putting yeah. your heart into somebody person. else is cheating. No, right? it's, it's not. You mentioned earlier that we're old school. <laughs> there it is again, man. It's like Donovan Larp, freaking Myron Gaines. They all just prescribe to that same exact autistic red pill ideology. Um, <laughs> men have sex. They don't cheat. Like he just casually said that, that like that's just like a fact of life. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my video on Donovan Sharp. Of course, men can cheat. You make a promise. You break it. You cheated. So stupid. I have a question for you. What would you want in your husband if you were to get married? 
What do you mean what I want? I just want someone that's, that's going to respect me. Okay, we need some tangible things. What do they need to bring to the table if you are going to take a man seriously in a relationship and respect. possibly marry him? Literally, he needs to bring respect. Like, I can handle up on my own. I could, if I want something, I can go and get it. I can go work and get whatever I want. I don't have to depend on somebody to okay, do it. Okay, does he have to earn at least as much money if no. you, as you? If no, not more? he doesn't. How old are you? Me, I'm 20. Okay, yeah, she's no life experience. Okay. That's actually his <laughs> He's just like, oh my gosh, this 20 year old is destroying me in a debate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's funny because just because of a number, you're going to say that. Like, you don't really know what I've gone through. Like, you don't, you don't, like, it's real easy to judge just because I'm 20. Like, it's no, no, no. But what I, what I am saying is that you're saying this right now because we're on a podcast and everything else like that. And you have to kind of hold the line. But the reality is you are not going to date a guy that's below you socioeconomically or whatever it may be. You're going to want a guy at least that's your equal. Mm. And you're going to want a guy that's at least stronger than you. You're going to want a guy that's Can you at least for me, than please? You. Because everybody thinks I'm I don't know. Because here. you, like, I mean, you she's serious. Not. I'm like, not lying. Her like, man, she really found like a one of a kind one. Like he's like, okay, crazy. Well, well, and it's not financially. It's yeah. not financial. It's not because he buys me the nicest cars. I have the nicest house. It's none of that. It's literally respect. He literally mm. respects me. He's super okay, respectful. But, but did you not say earlier that you were in a relationship with a guy and you have a, you have a Bentley right now? No. That was my ex. I said that if you could wear mine. I said yeah, my yeah, ex. yeah. But but, you, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But it even goes more but to show. Clearly, I had clearly. the Bentley and all the nice stuff, and I still left it for somebody that's my equal or under. Like it doesn't matter. No, no, because- no. <laughs> Damn. So remember before when Myron was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You just fell into my trap. That's literally, he, she, he literally just fell into her trap there because he was saying, you know, oh, well, women always want to have a guy that's above their status, all these other things in general, that's true. Um, but then, and she mentioned a Bentley earlier, apparently, I guess that was in the longer form of the podcast. <laughs> And then, and then she was like, no, I left that guy for another dude who is way poorer than him. It's like, if you ever want to do the whole thing of like, you know, just be rich, bro, just have a bunch of money, bro. And the girls will be comfortable, come swimming over. Come on, man. That's a giant actual red pill right there. That's so funny. Because he know. respects me and the Bentley guy didn't. Yeah, but like, the point is, is that you made a decision to be with a man that had some means, correct? But you left him because he didn't respect you, right? Mm, not because he didn't respect me, it but was yes, your okay. It was your choice. What so, was my choice? The man you chose. Yeah. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is you're saying that you guys are old school, right? Like, I guess you want to say traditional. But what I am saying is that women tend to look for traditional things in men, right? You got you to gotta speak right into it. Right into it. <laughs> Trace, <laughs> <right. laughs> Trace, like, it's like, it's like, it's like, that's how you know somebody lo- lost an argument when they say, you're saying blank, blank, blank. So what you're saying is, so what you're saying is, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the uh, Kathy Newman and Jordan Peterson debate where she just annihilated herself um, because basically what's happening is she, he tries to start uh, projecting onto her what he thinks she's saying. So he's basically revealing the straw man that she's created that he's created of her the entire time and he's been attacking and he just exposed himself there. Um, this is a great video. It's almost coming to an end, but um, let's continue. Yeah, so, so yeah, basically you're saying that we want, um, we're old school, whatever. Women want traditional men too. You want a guy that makes more money than you. You want a guy that's taller than you. You want a guy that's stronger than you. You want a guy to protect you, whatever. The problem is that women want traditional men, but they don't want to be traditional women. Mm-hmm. Let's keep it a stack. You guys want to be modern when it suits you, but then you want to be traditional when it suits you. You want a guy to be a, a respectful, traditional man, right? I'm with him because he respects me. What? Traditional characteristic, what right? What does he mean to but, you? Oh, can you let me finish? Uh, uh, right? But at the same time, you're saying, well, I don't want to adhere to traditional roles. I don't want to give him a bedroom fun when he needs it or whatever it may be. I want to go find out. Yeah, the problem is this, ladies. And, and- it's so funny because that's actually another example of classic projection right there. He says, oh, well, women want to be... Uh, want a man who's traditional, but they also want to be modern themselves and they don't want to match the traditional thing, the whole idea of like the trad wife, the trad con, whatever, right? Um, But guys like Myron are the same exact thing. They want women to be traditional in the sense that they're just going to have sex with them, but they don't want them to be traditional in the sense that, you know, the whole traditional thing with women was to not stay fit. Right? You don't want to get fat, but you don't want to go to the gym and all these other things because you'll get too bulky. And then women aren't supposed to be working hard. They're, they're not supposed to sweat, all these other things. I guarantee you that Myron would definitely expect you to go to the gym, but that is not a traditional thing. That is a more modern thing that women have started to do. So 
Can't have it both ways, brother. Just like you said at the beginning of the video, you can't have it both ways. But uh, that's something that you want yourself that you're not expecting from other women. And that's why these women don't respect you because you're incongruent in your beliefs. You don't actually have conviction with the words that you say because it doesn't even sound like you actually believe them. And you preach trying to be an alpha male and you try to present yourself as an alpha male when in fact you're a beta male. I don't always like to use those terms. I'm trying to use the verbiage that they use, especially these red pill guys. Um, <laughs> but he's talking about beta providing and then saying, well, that's what a man should do. That's a man's role. That is beta providing behavior. I don't even know if he actually read the rational mail. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's all I got to say for this video. I think it's really interesting. Um, you know, Fresh and Fit, I appreciate them posting these clips of them uh, thinking that they won the argument when they lost epically and they actually got destroyed by a 20-year-old here, which is really funny. Um, and it just goes to show you the cognitive dissonance there and the kind of delusions that they have and the bias that they have, that they actually think that they had a point here. I'm telling you, the entire point of this, okay, if they're only posting it to just try to rile up their own audience, which might entirely be the case, um, then I don't know, maybe they succeeded in doing that. But if you're trying to bring people to uh, be more in alignment with red pill philosophy, the red pill ideology, the roloology, whatever you want to call it, this is not a good representation of that. Um, because any logical person, anyone who has a, you know, a IQ above room temperature is going to look at that and be like, what, what are these guys talking about? Like that, that girl just destroyed him on so many points. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. You know, I'm, I'm very aware that when I make these videos like this, they're going to automatically get dislikes because Fresh and Fit has, um, a lot of followers. And, uh, you know, I've been accused of being a grifter because, uh, uh, and trying to chase clout more specifically with Fresh and Fit for going after them. Dude, if I wanted to chase clout, I would try to join their show, all right? Like, it's not like they've really had that many smart people on their show. I'm not saying that I'm like a super genius or anything. It's just that they're all so dumb that if I went on their show, they would think I'm a genius, okay? So it is goes against my best interest in trying to grow this YouTube channel by going after them I would be better off if I tried to like be make nice with them and try to get on their podcast. But um, I can't do that because the points that they have in there are so dumb and they're, they're so unethical and it's just wrong. And it kills me to see how popular it is. It's basically like, uh, you know, these ideas, these manosphere ideas are starting to get more kind of taken seriously and gaining traction on the Internet. And then it's basically just been reduced down to the lowest common denominator of idiots who just want to watch like rage bait content and watch a bunch of girls and guys argue with each other and then girls twerking on screen and whatnot. Look, that shit's entertaining, but it's not very informative. And I make these videos of ideally to be somewhat entertaining. That's up for you to decide, but I do more so want to do it because I do believe that when it comes to dating dynamics, when it comes to relationships, they often get trivialized as these things that aren't really that complicated, and they are. The application of how to actually have a successful dating life, to have it actually successful social life, it's pretty simple. Um, but the, the actual things that are going on in the background, especially psychologically, philosophically, are uh, quite complex. And I like to cover those things in depth in these videos because I'm one, I'm very passionate and uh, uh, intrigued by it. And uh, two, because I think it's very important to get a basic understanding of how human beings actually work. And if you start to, you know, this show kind of straw man's women in the sense of like, women are all this, 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 and this, and men should all be this, 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 and that. And all of those fundamental suppositions that they have, these, uh, presuppositions, I should say, are just inherently completely flawed and incorrect. And I will basically be calling those these videos out all the time for the foreseeable future. Um, I mean, my channel's too small now, but hopefully one day they have the balls to have me on so I can call them out on this stuff. I don't think they will and I don't blame them. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, that's all I got to say for this. I'm going to be making these videos every Friday. Uh, I'm thinking of calling them, because we just talked about it before, Fake and Fat Fridays. Because I have so many clips, I can just dedicate an entire day of posting uh, to their channel and their clips. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm sure this video is going to get a lot of dislikes. The last one 
about me basically saying, hey, if you dislike this video, you're clearly just a zealot. And people still disliked it anyway. It is what it is. It's all good. Um, anyway, thanks so much for watching. Uh, as always, uh, like and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out.